<gasps> Hi everybody, welcome along. It's, um, do you know, I can't even tell you what day it is. Is it Tuesday? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. Every day is the same as the one before. This is, this lockdown is the ultimate Groundhog Day. However, we're still here and we're progressing through the month. The numbers keep changing in the book, so something's good. Let's just skip this ad. I don't need him. Thank you. Um, and we're back on our uh, January daily. Thanks to everybody who watched the video yesterday with the little um, lovely little notebook that actually complemented the page that we were doing in the January daily. Of course, I didn't tell you that at the time. Um, Let's just have a look at what we did yesterday, which was the gorgeous um, yellow and blue kit from the Journey Boat. I, I really like this kit. And I guess I, I'm swayed in no small measure um, by the fact that my mum loved yellow and blue. And um, it just reminds me of her. So I, I, li I like that sort of intimacy of, of it as well. This morning I have been amusing myself with crafting. Uh, that was the little notebook we did yesterday in the uh, Take 5, which turned out okay. And it can live in there, like that, where it was designed to go. I won't leave it in there now because I'm trying to get rid of bulk, but that's really where it goes. Um, but this morning I've been doing other things. I made another little notebook, that one which I think I might, yeah, I don't know. I like them both. They're different, but the same, if you know what I mean. With a little butterfly there, etc., etc., and the page is in. So I've now got two notebooks. And I've been making these, well, this is a huge clue as to what's coming up today. I've been making these floating pockets. Um, you, you might have seen me do these before. Uh, I'm almost certain that you will have done. It's a just more of the same really. I'm sorry but sometimes my brain just refuses to come up with something new and last night was one of those times when I just I couldn't get a whole concept in my head of what I wanted to do. So I like these um, and they'll fit in with what I want. So those are indeed floating pockets. So that's today's and it must be the 13th, 30, eh? 13th, excellent. Floating pocket 13th. Right, so let's have a look and see how I did, how I did these. I'll pop Mr. Green over there for a while. They're quite pretty. They, they, I quite like those. This is decoupage and this is fussy cuts with butterflies from the, the kit. But I'm not going to use the blue and yellow kit today. I'm going to use the lovely kit from Lorna, um, La Vie en Rose, which is just, I mean, look at those images. They are st stunning, stunning. And I'm going to use that as my um, background. So I guess the thing to do really, first off, is to cut this out. That's, I'll cut it out where I've got it and then uh, I'll just offer it up to the page. I think I printed it out something like right, I think, but you can never be sure. So let's just make a start. We went online yesterday and did all our grocery shopping and did it click and collect so we can uh, go along to the supermarket, but they're outside where you click and collect. Um, and the guy hands you your groceries, you put them in your own boxes uh, or bags or whatever, and uh, that's it, job done. You know, you pay for it online before you get there, so there's no um, messing around with money or anything. He wears a mask, and as I say, it's outside, so it's fine. Um, but we're pretty out of a lot of foods, really, uh, predominantly cat food. And he's such a moaner. Uh, we've absolutely got to have cat food because there's no way you could live with him. I mean, we could give him other stuff. You know, we've got mince and stuff like that, human mince. But he just won't have it. He won't have anything unless it's the most expensive cat food. Yes, I know we've spoiled him. I know it's our fault. But that's uh, what he has. And we were nearly out of it. So 
as I say, we put our order in, click and collect, and then we went to book our time slot. And the first available time slot is next Monday. Well, we're not going to survive that long. <laughs> we're going to be on a severe diet. Um, I mean, we do have a lot of things in. We live very rurally, as you know. So when it comes to the winter, we do stock up with lots of things. And we could we could probably get get by. It might take a bit of planning of meals, etc. But we could get by. But there's the perennial cat problem. So uh, we've ordered that for next Monday, but we need an emergency ration in between. So I think we're actually going to have to go. Well, I'm not going. Something just fell off me. Um, Mr. F will have to go to the supermarket. So we don't know whether it's better to go late at night, early in the morning. Oh, I don't know. It's all such grief. It's slightly too big, this, for the page. Where's my book? So this is, I guess Lorna would have counted this as perhaps one of her background pages. It's very, very, very pretty and very, very shabby. It's gorgeous. So I just need a little bit top and bottom. Let's just have a look how wide, how much I need off the width. Uh, yeah, a little bit each side. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to wing it. Should we have a roll call? We can have a roll call. Indeed we can. Whilst uh, winging. Whilst winging. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Terry. Hiya, Terry. Who's got to go to the dentist, I think, later. Oh, Terry, you live in there, girl. Benice. Hiya, Benice. Roz. Hi, Roz. Jean. Hi, Jean. Dion. I hope your test results are good, Jean. I didn't know anything about it. I've just read it now. Um, you aren't the only one in the group waiting for test results. So my thoughts are with you uh, both. I only know of two of you. My thoughts are with you both. Kiyung. Hi, Kiyung. Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Helen. Hi, Helen. Shaz. Hello, Shaz. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Flo. Hi, Flo. Hilda. Hi, Hilda. Donna. Hi, Donna. Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Gonny. Gonny. Oh, hello, Gonny. Jen. Hiya, Jen. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Tiffany. Hello, Tiffany. Linda. Hello, Linda. Susan. Hello, Susan. Esther. Hello, Esther. I think that's it, unless I've missed you. Wow, what a great turnout today. Thank you very much indeed, guys, for uh, coming to hang out with me. I appreciate it, as always. Yeah, this COVID thing is not a joke. It's really not a joke. Um, the honest truth is I'm quite terrified about it, um, if I'm honest with you. There's so many complications that you can get from it that they just sort of don't tell you about. You know, you think it's a disease of the lungs. It's not. It's not just that. Um, it, it's an awful, frightening disease. And please, please take every care that you can to um, be safe. There, I'm not saying any more about it because it's just too depressing to even contemplate. And we are aiming for a bit of, bit of lightness. Right. Oh, it's still too long. Still too long. Wasn't brave enough. Keep the right way up. It's got text and behind the roses, so just needs another whisker off the off the height and a bit off there. So we'll get this up. Yeah, get this sorted. A whisper. How much is a whisper? That's a good question. Not as much as a shout. And a fair chunk, really, off, off the length. 
course these floating pockets that I'm going to make you will have to take into account the size of your bookers that they're going in uh, obviously right yeah that looks fine now that's great now I'm just going to ink around that with some tea stain um, if I had it out which I don't um, distress oops got some vintage photo that'll do I must have the tea stain out somewhere but I don't know where I need to start stacking this vintage photo upside down and see if I can get any juice out of it because it's kind of come to the end of its days and I think if you store them upside down you do get a bit longer out of them which is good Lorna has already sort of faux inked around these edges um, so I wouldn't want to go in with another colour like Victorian velvet or something because um, she's already used a sort of brown ink on the edges already. Let's put that upside down, give it every chance. Right, let's get that stuck on then. These are going to be two pretty pages side by side, aren't they? Well, hopefully, hopefully they will be. So I'm impressed, really impressed by the amount of you that are keeping up to date with this uh, January Daily. I think you sort of realise that if you lag behind, it's going to be a lot of work so you really are keeping up to date day by day and also if you can't you you know you've got to do that dreaded work thing um but honestly the pictures that are coming through on the facebook group amazing absolutely amazing you've taken a concept and sort of run with it and made it your own yeah they're all saying this brightens their day Oh, I'm so glad because that was what it was intended for. I mean, at the beginning, when we started this, we didn't know we were going to go into this full sort of lockdown situation again. But it obviously wasn't looking very good over Christmas. <coughs> and then in this country, for reasons best known to themselves, they decided that over Christmas we could have free mixing. You could go and go to places you'd never been for months and see people you hadn't seen for months, etc, etc. And uh, of course, that didn't really do anybody any good. So we could see that there was problems on the horizon and we thought this January Daily was probably a good idea. Um, just a bit of escapism, isn't it? While you're, while you're really, really thinking about measurements and patterns and stuff, you can't be worried about other things, which is great. Right, so that's on there. It's looking pretty. It's looking very pretty. It's looking so shabby. Right, oh, I'm just going to get my brayer. Just go over that a little bit. To make sure I've got good contact. I don't think that can move now. That's fine. Right, okay. So the envelopes that I'm planning on using are the same as the envelopes I used Key young for like this. The prompt, is. the prompt is floating pocket. Floating pocket today. Um, this being, these two being floating pockets. And this is the size that we're aiming for to go on our Mr. Green's book. Uh, I think they're perfect and I am making them as floating pockets but you know to clip onto the side there and then if you want to you can move it to another page and clip it on another page that's the kind of idea of a floating pocket I guess but if you want to scrap the floating idea you can just stick it onto your page 
it, you know, it'll sit there very nicely too. And you can get nice tags or, you know, like I say, those little booklets that we that we made, the little notebook, notebooks, they will fit in there. Um, tags, whatever, really. But that's the concept of floating pocket. Right, so what I, how I've made mine is by using two of these envelopes. And this is the measurements of the envelopes, nine inches by six and three eighths. Now you don't have to um, studiously copy that because this is what fits my book, but it won't necessarily fit yours. So, you know, think about that whilst you're choosing your envelopes. So I'm just take one of those. And I'm going to just, let's just move you, Mr. Green, a little bit. It's going to stick the flap down. These are just envelopes I had in my vast envelope stash. <laughs> and I'm not joking about it being vast. It's vast. It's ridiculously vast. And now I have an envelope punch board. <laughs> so I can make them as well. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I've got far too many envelopes for one normal person. Right, so that's that stuck down. Um, and what I'm going to do at this moment is just take my pokey tool and I'm just going to poke it in, into the back there. Not, not all the way through, just into the back, because otherwise the air is all trapped in and once you start folding it and stuff, the air can't get out and it goes... Which is not what you want. Right. Now then, we want to... So with the inside of the envelope um, facing towards you, and then you'll have a nice back on it. Put that down the bottom there. Um, fold it up so it's going to fit in nicely. So that's about where I want mine, I think. And then I don't need Mr. Green for a little while. So he can go somewhere. I need another tidy up. It's just getting ridiculous. Deja vu all over again. Yeah, it happens. You say that every day. No, but about three days ago, I did have a tidy up, so it was all right. <laughs> and now... Back to just heaps of stuff all over the place, which is no good. Right, so I've printed these out from Lorna's kit. Um, I put them into Word and I've resized them to a size that I think is appropriate. It's actually just a little bit too big. Um, and I'm going to use my fancy new decal edge cutter. Look at this, guys. Um, so first off, I'm going to just, I love decal edges, but I really hate tearing paper. It's one of, I just hate it. So I'm hoping that Tim's come to my rescue here with this decal edge. I've used it once or twice, but, um, wow, look at that. Lovely decal edge. I might as well cut the bottom off as well. Just make sure it's where I want it to be. Right, so I need that to be about... Oh, it's miles too long. Let's make a mark where I want it. About there. It doesn't have to go right the way down into the crease of your pocket. As you want to see it. So I'm not sure exactly where this cuts read the line. So let me... Ah, cuts exactly there. <laughs> Lovely. So, yeah, that's going to go there. And then I want that right on that edge, if I can get it. I need a bit more practice, really. Yeah, that's good. So that's going to go there like that. And where do I need this side? About there. Uh, 
um, which I think is about there. A bit of practice here. <coughs> Trial and error going on. So let's have a look. Does that fit there? Well, it fits just charming, beautiful. Yeah, and then this piece is going to come, fold up, so you'll see all of this. And then this other piece that I printed out is going to go along there. That's the, that's the plan. Not saying it's going to work, just that's the plan. And I'm going to use the other edge because it's straight to cut by. It's cut a bit <coughs> off because I seem to remember it was a bit wide. Um, cut the top off. This is novel for me because, as you know, I normally use my roll tree cutter. So it's quite a novel thing. Right, so I want just inside that line. And with other guillotines, there's a definite line where you go. But this. I'm not quite sure where the line is. Let's try that. It will come with practice. Oh yeah, that's fine. And then I want the bottom. So for all of you that really like deckle edges and absolutely loathe cutting them, here's your solution. I think, I think it's the solution. Right, let's see what we've got so far. Let's see if it works. Is everybody all right? Yeah, Shazza says you just bought the chair that's shaped like a saddle. Makes you sit upright, apparently. Oh. That sounds like hard work. She says it's agony after 20 minutes. <laughs> Put it out for the dustmen, Shaz. You just bought it. Get, a, get an armchair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, okay. So I'm not sure that bottom line is exactly straight, so I'm just going to have a look at it again. Maybe she got the wrong way around and sitting on the pommel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shaz, dear me. Right, okay. That's interesting. It does cut even... Oh, I was going to say even really fine bits. But yeah, it does. So that's good. So I haven't inked the envelope. I'm actually going to ink the paper that goes on. I think you get a better effect that way. So that's kind of going to be our floating pocket this way on. I will give you an alternative as well, but not quite yet. Right, so back to the vintage photo. Just distress up these edges somewhat. Don't need to do the bottom, of course, because it's going in the pocket. This is a gorgeous kit, isn't it? No doubt about it. And it's crystal clear as well. Prints out fabulously. And let me tell you, I am not contracted to say anything like this. Lorna did gift me the kit, I will say that, but beyond that I can tell you if I don't like it, but I absolutely love it. Right, so we're going to stick these on like that. back to freezing here again we did have a brief respite earlier in the week or at the weekend or sometime recently 
uh, where it got up to positive figures, but we're back down into negatives now. It doesn't really bother me. I'm not going out or anything, so it doesn't really affect me very much. Right, let's get this stuck in. Even border all the way around if you can manage it. There we go. Pretty. rub off any bits of glue if you can see that you've got any bits on the nice face of the fabric of oh, fabric fabric what do you call it paper <laughs> <laughs> it's all been too long and we're only on the 13th oh we're not even halfway not even not even halfway come on I know. oh dear me wouldn't even be halfway if it was February. No, we wouldn't. So that's going to go there like that. So let's get that glued on. Brayer. Right now that that could be that you know that could be as far as you really want to take this um, and to be honest there's nothing wrong with that it's a really pretty little pocket uh, you could however get some ribbon out uh, like this just it's got the right side, that's it, the right side. You could put that along there, you could put a butterfly. Um, in fact, why don't we do that? It seems a dreadful shame not to do that. I know we've got a yellow rose on the bottom, but I'm kind of ignoring that. And I'm kind of wishing I'd made it pink. But it doesn't matter, it's it's nice. So that's there's our ribbon, and I've got the double-sided that Nancy bought me here, which is the right thickness, I think, for that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I'm just going to have a little look and see. Oops. I've got my drawer stuck. That's it. See if I can see a pink butterfly anywhere. I'm pretty sure I've got some. Let's, let's have a look, see what we've got. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah loads of pink butterflies hundreds well not hundreds but that's quite nice but perhaps a bit big let's just have a look and see if that is a bit big so if I put my ribbon down there I'm going to cover this entire yellow rose up if I'm put that there yeah, I think it's a it's a bit on the big side. Um, what's that? Oh, it's a bit on the little side. How about these ones? That one. That's quite nice. Maybe a bit further over this way. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, no, I think it needs to be down on this corner here, like that. Yeah, I think that's all right. I think that's fine. We'll do that. Um, as I say, I wish I'd made that yellow rose pink, but I haven't. So I'm just going to make the best of it. So I'm going to get my double-sided. Stick it down. Well, not stick it down. Place it down. Sticky side up. And then attempt to put my ribbon on it. Right side up, whichever side that is, I think it's that side. 
So I'm just going to start it off there and then kind of pull it so it's sort of straight. Okay, like that. It's fine. Lovely. Right, so um, take the backing off. Out right the way, a little bit of fly. Let's just stick this there. So I'm coming down from the edge a little bit. I'm just going to pop that there and fold it over to the back. You could put lace along the top. There's lots of things you can do. Oh, but no, no double sided on that bit. You might not want to decorate it at all and that's perfectly fine also you don't have to uh, do all of this stuff if you don't feel inclined like i said when we had it made it looked perfectly nice jean says she needs all these tips she struggles even putting ribbon on tape yeah i, I don't blame you it's, it, it's not the easiest thing to do to be honest with you so right there we are it's not exactly square look, see, but I'm going to disguise that by my butterfly wing, <laughs> which is going to go there. Right, so I'm just going to whiz around the edges of this um, with what's on the brush, which happens to be vintage photo. Just get rid of those white edges. Hi, Miranda. Hello, Miranda. Nice to see you. Right, so I am literally just going to stick that on there. I think it makes it look nice. Some cream lace would have looked nice on here because it, it's got quite a cream thing going on. Um, but, you know, decide yourself what you want. Get him stuck on. Just... Hi, Lorna. Hi, Lorna. And you recognise the papers. I'm just going to pop that on there, like so. And I'm going to give him a gem. I mean, why not? He deserves a gem. And Bling, Blingy's watching, so she'll be shouting gem at the, at the blinking screen anyway. So let's get these out. Lorna says she does. She recognises her. Good start. <laughs> That's always helpful. Let's see if I can find a pink one in here. Um, I think I can. I can see one, whether I can pick it up or not. It's a different matter. Says, yes, are. bring on the bling. Bring on the bling. Uh, right, my E6000. It's only having one stone in it. Where's my katana there? Right. So just in the middle of his body, bit V6000, bit of bling, keeps everybody happy. But particularly Jen. Particularly Jen. <laughs> yeah, particularly Jen. So we'll pop that onto there. Let's put something on the end of that. Anyway, I've rectified it, it's fine. Lovely, let's just stick that down. Um, and you can take your time with it, of course, and it'll be more accurate than mine. Look at that image, would you? I mean, it's just blooming gorgeous. Printed out like a dream. So just a bit of glue up the sides here. I'm just going to put a clip on each on the top of each side there. 
So we should go and make a brew. Yeah. What do you think of what's today's amusing anecdote? I don't have that many amusing anecdotes. Well, not that I can think of, anyway. Uh, this glue top's getting a right mess. Right, so there's one. This last time we went for the walk up the hill, and came across the gateway. <laughs> Squeezing through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll it was tell amusing you. for me. <laughs> tell you about that in a while. So that's number one. It's done. It would sit beautifully, I think, in your um, altered book, the January Daily book. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that look? Let's just take those off while we have a look. Doesn't that look pretty? Think, I think. I think it's lovely. And I mean, there's nothing stopping you if you are gluing it down um, from, you know, carrying on decorating if you want to. But I don't think it needs it. I think it looks lovely like that. And I think because it's a floating pocket and the back is beautifully clean, um, which could be used for journaling if you wanted, you know, a little safety pin on there and job done. It's really nice. But let's not be content with just that. Let's move on to another floating pocket, a one that I know you have seen me do uh, fairly recently. So sorry for the um, for repeating myself, but I know we do have a lot of new subscribers uh, and a lot of new members to the uh, Facebook group. So they might want to see this. So let's take another envelope. Same size, nine inches by six and three eighths, but I'm telling you, yours may, may be and probably is different. So, you know, don't go just on this. So I'm just gonna stick uh, this down. In this day and age, I don't particularly feel like licking it. There we are. So what I'm going to use for this one, you want this side facing you, the side with the flap facing you. Uh, this time I'm going to use music paper to um, put on first. I think the last time you saw me do this sort of procedure I used uh, dictionary paper, which is also fine. Ornery book page is fine. Um, oh, Crafty Pat. I don't know who's, who Crafty Pat is. Hi, you're welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Linda. Jen, hands up. Coffee, please. Yeah. I'm getting I one. Everybody wanted one. Oh. Right, so I'm just going to fold that up again. About a similar amount. I'm just, I'm winging it. I'm doing it by eye. Whatever sort of looks quite balanced, really, I would say. So there we are. So now we need to uh, cut the music paper. So I want it. Let's see if I can sort this out in one go. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Crafty Pat says she found you on junk journaling. Junk journaling. That's us. It's what we do. So I'm going to cut it off about, I've lost my pencil, about here. About there. I've lost, I've lost Tim. Here he is. So I'm just kind of going to get that where I think it's going to cut, where it looks straight like that. Give it a chop. Yeah, looks fine. So I just need to come just inside the edge of the end of the, of the music, which is about there, I would say. Same on the other side, about there. Just 
have a look, see if we're anything like right. Thanks, my love. That you was very, very sweet. Very decent of you. Just needs a, a whisper off with with ways. Uh, not much at all. Yeah, that's that's marvellous, marvellous. So just need to do the same down here. So I need it to about there. And then just inside the music, I think, was where we said so. I hope this is right, but if not, I do have a spare book. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see what that's like. Well, surprisingly accurate. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to um, ink around the music page at the paper <coughs> with a vintage photo. Just think it looks nicer <coughs> inking around the, the page than the envelope. Although you can ink both if you want. Don't need to do the bottom. going to go there and it just shows up the edge of that nicely with it being inked I think especially on the cream envelope I've no idea where I got these envelopes from not a clue they are in my huge stash which I have a box for I've got a big plastic box that I've got all my envelope well no, I've got envelopes in, but it's not all my envelopes because I found some more the other day and they don't fit in my big plastic box. So, not sure. Right, so that's going to go there. Like that. So let's get that glued in place. I'm going to use Aileen's for this because it's a bit thin. And it's the sort of thing I'd generally use um, glue stick on that sort of thing just the collar doesn't usually wrinkle your paper at all I've never had it wrinkle anything um, but it is quite wet and this paper is quite thin so I'm just gonna use Aileen's sides like so lovely job lovely job great same with this bottom section which is I think that side so this is the wrong side Yeah, Mr. F was asking me to regale you of, of something that happened that wasn't even funny. See, I know you're not going to laugh. We decided one day that we would go for a walk. Um, and, uh, you know, as you know, we live just on the outskirts of the Lake District. So we went for one of the sort of steeper walks. Turned out it was just, I mean, it was just stupidly steep. Even Mr. F was jiggered. Um, 
But anyway, to get onto the walk itself, let me just get this stuck down. I need to concentrate. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, it's on the move. That's it. Yeah, to get onto the walk itself, you parked the car and then you um, went through this sort of gate. Well, it wasn't a gate. It was a, an, o an opening in a dike, a wooden... A wooden... A, a stone wall. Dry stone wall. A dry stone wall, which around here are called dikes. And... Uh, uh, you know, you could see that the hill behind it was just ridiculously. But never mind, I was determined, had my determined head on. So, Mr. F went through the hole in the... It was a proper hole in the wall as well. You know, it had like concrete things down. Well, down one side it had a concrete thing, which I guess is where a gate had been hung at some stage. But the other side was just the stones. So he went through and then it was my turn to go through and I looked at it and I thought, you know, that's a bit narrow. <laughs> uh, and it turned out it was a little bit narrow because when I went through, I sort of turned around. So my BTM was up against the loose stones and I pushed my way through, you know, not to be outdone. He got through, I was going to get through. And then when I got through, all these stones <laughs> fell out the wall because I'd pushed them out with my bum. <laughs> and he wanted me to tell you that because he thinks that's funny. What does that say about him? Eh? A lot. Right, okay, let's get back to the job in hand, which is much nicer than that horrible story. Right, as you know, we're using Lona's uh, La Vie en Rose papers. And we've done one already in her papers. But what I thought was, if we were doing a journal using La Vie en Rose, and some of you say that to me, you ask me, you know, give me some ideas to use these papers in journals. Well, sometimes you need things that aren't the actual papers, things that are complementary to them, that you can add in and bulk your papers up and add interest. And so you may remember with my eBay haul the other day of um, napkins, that I bought one that I said was just a shabby chic, plain, straightforward, shabby chic one, and this is it. And I thought that this one would be really nice to decorate this floating pocket and would also complement Lorna's beautiful kit. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. So pin back your luggles if you're not um, familiar with decoupage. This is a napkin. They're available lots of places. eBay is a really good place to get them. They come generally in three plies. That's three sheets to, to each napkin. They're tissue paper and they're crimped around the edge to stop them all coming apart. That's all you need to know. Right, so what we are going to do is tear out the piece that we want. So we're just going to go around it. You don't have to be meticulous. Um, just, you know, don't leave too wide a border, but um, just use your thumb to pull against and pull around the, the part that you want to use for your pattern. There are other ways of doing this. I'm well aware of that. This is how I do it. So... Now I'm just going to take the straight edge off here because if you leave a straight edge and it's visible that I will always light on it. it. It's like it's looking for a straight edge. So I don't want to give it an excuse to find one. So I'm just going to tear this off up here. So as we have no straight edge left. And the same along this edge here. If you think you can absolutely accurately get it on the edge of your paper or whatever, carry on. But it's my experience that they move from where you want them. So I think it's safer just to tear the straight edge off for the minute that it takes to do it. Right, 
So there we are, this is what we've got. And I'm suggesting that we put that bit there. And I think that goes with Lorna's roses beautifully, very complimentary, I would say. Can I just say also at this stage, if you wanted to, you could sew around this. Sew around this flap here and then sew all the way around it. And then, uh, you know, you can sew the pockets up as well, if, if you want to. I'm not for this, um, for, the, for now anyway. So that could go there. So what could we have down here? So let's have a look back at the, well, I don't want the same thing there. It's, it's too big. But what if I just cut out, tore out that part? Be selective about the part that I use. Why not? Let's do it. This napkin, each quarter is identical to the other. So um, I'll just hang on to those leaves for the time being. I don't know if I need them or not. I can always tear them off afterwards. Some, the occasional napkin you get, the whole thing is a picture. You know, the entire napkin is one picture. And they're great if you want to do, you know, a big mixed media thing or something like that. The amount of shabby sheep, na sheep napkins I must have had in my life. Honestly, it's frightening. And I've never ever used one for its intended purpose. We don't have drinks and napkins. Or snacks and napkins. We have kitchen towel. That's what it's for. Let's tear that off and tear around here. See where we're at, what we've got. Right, so this is what I'm left with. And it's, you know, from there, it's the same thing. And yet the way we've cut it and the way it's kind of upside down looks entirely different. So, don't think I can get that big leaf in there, but I think I can get everything else in. So let's just tear that one out. Like that. Yeah, I can get that in there and I think that'll look nice. That's the plan anyway. So now then, when it comes to decoupage what you need is um i'll use my glass board that's the best plan Let's clear some space for it right okay now there are many 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 different kinds of glues that you can use mod podge is perhaps the best known of all the glues seem a long way away today Mod Podge is perhaps the best known of all the glues. Um, pull in a bit if you want to pull in. Well, it yeah. seems a long, long, long way out. It does not to you. Not especially. Depends on the size of the thing that you're actually attempting to do. But I there suppose. are loads of other glues as well. Um, there's, um, like that. yeah, lovely. My favourite used to be Fusion Grid, um, Decoupage and transfer job but i think they've stopped doing it i can't get it anywhere uh so i've gone to my next favorite which is the galleria matte medium and you can use this for making collages you know when you're putting or your franken pages or anything like that it's really good for that sort of thing so what we need to do is get is separate these other two layers from the layer that's got the pattern on and that's it. Sometimes they come away nicely like that. Sometimes they're absolute pigs and you can't get them off no matter what you do. But that came away really rather well. And we'll take this one off as well. There we go. Now then, another word of caution about decoupage. If you are decoupaging onto a dark surface, 
you won't see the pattern very well once you've decoupaged because it depends on the light coming through the tissue to allow you to see the pattern. If you if you determined that you want to de uh, decoupage onto a dark surface, the best thing I can advise is that you carefully uh, paint out an area of white gesso where your decoupage is going to go. That way then decoupage onto the gesso and you'll see it. So that's just an, an option. The other thing I would say is try and match up the background colour of the napkin with the colour it's going on to. You know, if, if the, this background colour was green, say, or whatever, of course you would see where it ends. You'd see where I've torn it. And sometimes that's the look that you're going for. Sometimes absolutely not. So just sort of think about that, really. It's something to think about. So I'm going to put this onto here. I've got my medium out. I've got this brush, which isn't the best brush in the world, but never mind, it'll do. So I'm starting at the center and I'm going out. I've put no glue on the page previously, nothing. I just laid my, my tissue down and I started in, at the center and I'm going outwards from the center. That way then we push all the air that could potentially be trapped in there, push it all out to the edge. So from the middle out like that. And don't be tempted, and it really is tempting, to keep going back over bits, fiddling with them. That way leads disaster. I'm telling you from real personal experience, uh, that way leads disaster. The other thing is make sure you've got plenty of glue on your brush, because if you haven't, you'll create friction and then you'll tear the tissue. So try and remember all these things that I'm telling you. Um, plenty of glue from the center outwards, no glue on the page before you begin. Don't go dilly-dallying over the things that you've already glued down. Just be content, they're there, they're glued, they'll be fine. Right, so there we are, I think that's okay. It's down. Now if you think that you have got any creases in that, which is entirely um, possible. Take yourself a piece of cling film or saran wrap and just lay it over the entire thing that you've just decoupaged and that will afford some um, strength to the underneath part and you can just smooth it out nice as you like like that. So any wrinkles or imperfections of any sort will be nicely. But use, you know, use the flat of your fingers. Don't pokey pokey. And when you're happy that it's all done, lift it up and take it off at a very, very shallow angle like that. No elastoplast drippings or anything weird and wonderful. Gently, gently. Like that. And there you are. You end up with piece of decoupage that's wrinkle free, it's flat. Looks good to me. See the music through it? Yeah, you can see the music, which is why I put the music paper on. If I didn't want that, I would have left it and just decoupage straight onto the cream envelope. But I think music paper particularly probably is my favorite, but text of any sort I like, uh, dictionary text and anything like that looks good. So this I now want to stick onto there, but I don't want to put that down because it's going to catch on the decoupage I've just done. So I'm just going to hold this where I want it and turn the whole thing over. And that's where I want this. So no glue down first. Don't, you know, clear that thought from your head. From the middle out to the edge other way from the middle out to the edge lots of glue on your brush then I'm doing I'm just going round from the middle to there and then straight down there and outwards 
So all my, my brush strokes really are radiating out from this centre. And you shouldn't need to fuss too much. As long as you've got plenty glue on, you'll be fine. So that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to do the same thing again with the blue tack, I nearly called it. What do you call it? Cling film. And just press that down there. any bits that you weren't firm enough with or whatever you'll catch them now and they'll stick down and then gently pull it back and there you have it some decoupage to be proud of that you happily put in your journal so there we have it like that and I think that is a wonderful um, compliment for Lorna's papers. Let me just see if I can... No, I can't. I'll just, I'll just mop this up. It's all right. Don't get it all over your trousers again. <laughs> so Mr. F opened the um, map medium. He sort of decorated himself in a rather jazzy fashion. Just call me Matt. <laughs> yeah, Matt. I'm just going to save this that I've got out. It's um, it's not the most expensive of things, but why would you want to waste it? So I'll just put that back in there. Wash your brush out at your earliest convenience because it is acrylic. Um, so those of you that paint with acrylics will know once it dries on your brush, you, uh, you're dead. Well, there are brush restorers and stuff, but this is just a cheap little brush. So there you go. The next thing to do once this is dry is uh, stick the sides down and there you have it, a floating pocket that will complement Lorna's La Vie en Rose papers beautifully, I think. I don't know, what do you think, Lorna? Do you think that that would go in a journal of your papers? I hope so. Um, so let's bring the other one in. It's now dry. So that's the one using Lorna's papers. Can I just give... Oh, you're away. I'll, I'll put that there. Be all right for a minute. Go and wash it. Um, so let's bring Mr. Green in. Where is he? Here he is. And have a look and see what we think. So let's just move these up for a minute. So there's the page from Lorna. Um, it's just so pretty on its own actually isn't it and there's one of the floating pockets that we did using Lona's papers just as an idea for you to what you can do with the kit you know how to get started sometimes it's a really good idea to start by making ephemera when you when you print the whole kit out or you look at the whole kit and you're swamped by it especially a big kit like this I think there's 32 pages in this kit there's a lot of kit and you look at it and you think, where do I start? I haven't got a clue. I, don't, I, I do not know what to do. The best thing, I think, is to print out the ephemera. Print out all the pages with the ephemera. Cut them out so you're familiar with them. And then think, oh, yeah, you know, that would make a nice notebook cover or whatever. And, oh, I could make a floating pocket with that. I could make a triple tag with that. And ideas come and then... You've got some pieces then when you start your actual journal to draw on and to put into your journal. And it seems to build quite quickly then. So there's a floating pocket for you. This is the other one. I can't glue it up yet because it's obviously not dry yet. Um, but that's the one that I made that I thought would complement Lorna's kit and would go in with it just to extend the kit a little bit. But also to add some variation just to the pure... Um, design pages so there we have it we have two floating pockets floating around Mr Green <laughs> um, I'll just get a safety pin no I won't I'll get a paper clip it's the one out oh, there's a white one here that I'll do no I've got some pink ones oh fuck there's one um, paper clip this 
on the side of the page because it is after all a floating pocket there we have it so there we are you know you've, you've got room to put something in there you can journal on the back you've got this delicious paper there kind of jobs are good and i think guys and girls for today is everybody happy i'm not what's the matter no date oh no date no date what did you tell oh yes i know mr f found these when he was tidying up out outside not outside outside kind of in the outside room i don't know what you call it laundry room i suppose there's a word for it, isn't there? Utility, utility room. room, that's it. <laughs> it's where the utility things live. I'll show it you one day. I don't go there often. It's got a tumbler in it and a washer and a freezer and a fridge. And it's got like a pantry in it. I mean, why would I go there? Right, date. So we've got... Tiny alphabet stickers are called from Prima Marketing. Yeah, I think I remember when Mr. F got these. Do you remember a car boot somewhere? I don't know how you get into them. How do you get into them? I'll just take the top off. So these are the ones and twos and threes. So this is the sheet that I want then. Oh, let's just take them all out, shall we? It's just, it's just ridiculous. Is it all one sheet? Well, that's how I can't get them out separately because it's all one. Right, so I want one. They're sticky, so I think it'll be all right. I'm going to put them on the floating pocket, uh, not on this page, because the floating pocket might vary where it lives in life, but it, it will always be the 13th. Thirteen. Okay, we're doing well. Have we got any slanty bits? No. Have we? You mean italics? No, I mean um, slash. Slash. No. No, no slash. Because it's letters and numbers. Yeah, but there are things, but there's just no slash. Uh, right, so I'm going to put one. No, I'm not going to put anything else, because if I do, I'm going to start encroaching over here. I'm just going to leave it at 13. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it at 13. Put a small T and a small H on, I suppose. Yeah, I could. I do a different font, maybe. I don't know. I can't see what's on there. No, I don't like that idea. 13 it is. So there we are, guys. That is today's page. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the... Uh, floating manufacturer of the floating pockets having a look what we can do with Lorna's lovely kit um, and a bit of decoupage for good measure uh, and there you go <laughs> so I will see you on the 14th of January which oddly enough is tomorrow <laughs> um, two o'clock same everything I'll be here I hope you'll be here as well I hope you're following along and I hope you're enjoying it I hope it's not a chore um, I hope, you know, even if you're not following along, I hope you're enjoying their lives at least. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks very, very much for joining us. Um, my thoughts are with Eugene and uh, other people. Take care. Please, please take care out there. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. See you.